We are preparing this podcast series as part of the Women in Social Peace project. The main aim of this series is to benefit and inspire women from the experiences and stories of women mediators and peace builders from Turkey and the world. In this series, as Dilara Gök, Dilan Kaya and Tunç Karaçay, we came together with valuable women mediators and peace builders. We will be pleased to bring their voices together with you. Hi everyone, I am Dilan Kaya. I am Dilara Gök. We are preparing this podcast series as part of the Women in Social Peace project. The main aim of this series is to benefit and inspire from the experiences and stories of women mediators and women working in the field of peace building from Turkey and the world. Additionally, we will make this stories accessible in Arabic, Kurdish and Turkish in written format. In today's program, we have a valuable guest working in this field, uh, Muna Lukman. Muna, I want to say welcome. Thank you for the nice introduction, Dilan, and welcome again, Muna. Before we start the program, I would like to briefly introduce you. Uh, Muna Lukman is a popular activist for peace building, women and security issues in Yemen. She is founder of the Women for Humanity Foundation and co-founder of the Women in Solidarity Network. During the war in Yemen, she has opened corridors for humanitarian aid settled conflicts between warring communities and negotiated with armed groups or child hostages. She advocates for peace and women's rights on the international level as well. Additionally, she is a member of the Women's Alliance for Security Leadership Network, which brings together women's rights and peace practitioners and organizations. Also, in 2019, Muna was awarded the 8th International Young Women's Peace Award. This is not easy to introduce you briefly, Muna. Thank you again for accepting our invitation. Uh, so regarding your experiences, uh, firstly, we would like to ask a question about your professional works in Yemen. As an activist and peace builder, could you please explain a bit about the latest situations regarding the civil war in Yemen? Also, could you tell a bit about the effects of this war on the daily life of women and civil society maybe? Well, uh, this is a, a bit of a difficult question <laughs> because I am maybe uh, wearing so many hats and different uh, backgrounds. But uh, I'm mainly a humanitarian worker. I've had a lot of experience uh, working in Yemen with international organizations and also uh, with the private sector, which maybe uh, not a lot of people know that. I've worked a lot with the uh, HSA group and um, um, my work has been uh, expanded during the war, especially uh, because of the situation itself and because of, um, I think that women uh, naturally become peace builders um, because they are uh, used to responding uh, at uh, difficult times and, and during emergencies. And uh, this is exactly what I found myself uh, in uh, 2015, uh, where um, everybody left uh, Yemen and um, in particular the, the city where I was, um, the city of Taiz, which is uh, sieged and um, it has faced the most conflicts, armed conflicts. There I um, initiated a initiative at the beginning, it was called Food for Humanity, It has now become um, a full-grown uh, foundation. Um, this is, um, maybe I'll tell you more about that later, but it's a humanitarian and um, uh, civil society organizations, an organization where we uh, work with uh, displaced families and people who are in need, um, both on the emergency response and also Uh, on long-term development that we really focus on as much as possible because the, the war in Yemen is prolonged. Uh, it's now in its seventh year of conflict. Uh, it remains the world's worst humanitarian crisis. And as you know, the situation is deteriorating uh, even more. Uh, the local currency has collapsed. Of course, it has pushed the food and other essential goods, uh, which are mainly imported in Yemen. Um, and... Um, And because of this, um, Yemenis are unable to access the food and health services that they need to survive. The devastating situation has worsened and um, it's really had a high impact mainly on women because they are so vulnerable. 
they're displaced. Uh, the, the number of people living in poverty has also increased because of the non-payment of the salaries. So people have lost their salaries, their livelihoods, their, um, their homes, their lives. So uh, this has all uh, had a, a great impact on, on women and there has been um, a lot of early child marriage also, which has increased. Um, because people marry off their daughters to make income for the dowries. So it's just a devastating situation from all uh, aspects. Um, the country is also facing a, a huge water shortage. The, this has also exasperated the situation. And most of the cities do not have uh, electricity. And can you imagine uh, the impact of not having the electricity on, not only for, because of the hot weather, but also uh, on hospitals, on Many of the companies have already shut down. The private sector is uh, responsible for the imports, um, 90% of the imports, and also of the, um, um, of the Yemen economy. So uh, now uh, with the war, we've had major uh, challenges that the private sector is uh, also um, facing. So now we have um, a huge uh, impact on the economy, on the livelihoods of the people, and on the infrastructure. These are the main uh, key um, issues. And of course, the protection and uh, uh, of the civilians um, and the, the, the protection, the, uh, the stability, the security of the civilians is all under attack. Currently, um, the past two months, we've had some uh, breakthroughs, but at the same time, we also have uh, the impact of the Russian-Ukraine conflict. Uh, its effect on the global wheat uh, prices um, is also um, making or creating an, another external shock for Yemen on its food and economy and food security. And this is another issue. But the recent developments in Yemen are positive. Um, we've recently had the Yemeni-Yemeni talks, which were um, supported by the Gulf uh, Cooperation Council, the GCC, and led by Saudi Arabia. Uh, we've had some uh, breakthrough there, actually big ones. And um, I think it's, it's you know, the an awaited light, maybe I would call it in a very dark tunnel of bloodshed that we have seen. Um, the UN Special Envoy also um, has um, led the Amman consultations and uh, managed to reach uh, a truce a two months truce for Ramadan and after Ramadan, and it's still holding, but it's, you know, at the, it, it will break at any minute. And that's what we hope um, that we can all work together with our, with the international community and all the peace brokers in uh, working on Yemen to um, make it hold until we get a ceasefire. So I'll stop there and uh, um, be open to any more questions. Thank you so much, Muna. By the way, you mentioned Yemeni talks. I think you are already involved in it. Could you give us more details about these talks? Well, um, we've had the um, this in in during March. Um, the UN-led peace process uh, led uh, a group of um, uh, track uh, three tracks uh, peace uh, on peace uh, talks. Uh, these tracks were the pol- uh, the political track, the economic track and the security and military attack, which I was a part of. Um, I'm very highly involved in the security and military um, aspects uh, also, um, in addition to my humanitarian relief work. Um, I'm also working um, as the gender and inclusivity advisor with uh, DCAF. Uh, and uh, in that capacity, I have been involved in security dialogues. Now, the security dialogues in Yemen Um, are quite uh, unique and um, uh, right now um, we have not really had women in these uh, talks before and so this is good that uh, at least now there is slightly more inclusivity it's not big but it's better than it was a a little before now during these uh, Amman consultations um, uh, there were about 100 uh, Yemeni people who are from all walks of life Uh, and in particular, the political and the um, uh, parties and um, civil society were participating. And then um, Saudi Arabia and the GCC uh, announced that there will be uh, Yemeni-Yemeni talks, uh, which will be supported by the GCC 
uh, from the um, 29th to 7th of uh, April. And so we were invited and we traveled to uh, uh, Riyadh and uh, it was um, uh, led by the GCC and uh, all people from uh, from all the military, security, politicians, um, civil society, members of the women community, the youth, academics, um, uh, previous ministers and um, governors, all of them uh, were invited and even the Houthis were invited, but they refused to uh, attend. Approximately 500 to 600 members of the Yemeni community were, were in these uh, Yemeni Yemeni talks. Um, and it resulted in uh, big changes in Yemen. First of all, they, they uh, created a very important dialogue uh, and it was based on six tracks, um, and uh, including the humanitarian relief track, which I was part of, um, and I actually uh, led the drafting of this uh, committee. Through this, um, I think um, the breakthrough that happened as a result was that uh, the whole the president first of all uh, gave his um, authority to a presidential c a council and so he stepped back and eight people were um, eight very influential high level ranking uh, military men uh, were uh, appointed in this presidential council um, the presidential council is led by uh, the previous um, uh, advisor to the president and he is a very well known and very well respected uh, person. His name is Rashad Al -Ali, Dr. Rashad Al Alimi. And I think that this in itself was a breakthrough because they brought all the people who were um, actually fighting also on the ground uh, and uh, brought them together so that there is a complete reform uh, of, the, uh, of the government and the leadership uh, of Yemen. This was widely accepted um, positively in Yemen. And uh, it, it remains with many challenges. Uh, but I think it was a very good step because during the past seven years, we've had a very weak government, we've had very weak uh, leadership, and this has also caused a lot of uh, fragmentation in the community and, um, and a lot of the fighting also. After um, the presidential council was announced, uh, $3 billion were announced by uh, UAE and Saudi Arabia to support the economy in Yemen. We hope that this goes through. A truce was uh, also uh, on the 7th of April was uh, uh, announced. And um, during part of this truce is to open the airports, in particular Sana'a Airport, um, and open the roads which are uh, closed and have been seized for the past few years uh, in Taz, and also to bring in um, the fuel shipments uh, that have been blocked uh, by the coalition and the government in, um, in Yemen. So I think these are really important breakthroughs. None of this has been accomplished, uh, accomplished completely yet, uh, except for the, um, the fuel that has uh, uh, started to come in the shipments. Um, other than that, we haven't really seen either the Sana'a airport being open or anything else. These are very, very important measures. If they happen, we will see a lot of relief coming into Yemen and uh, de-escalation um, of the fighting. Uh, if, we, if we don't act quickly during these two to three weeks, um, the fighting will be worse than it was before, which is something that we are really worried about. So, um, yeah, um, the armed conflicts uh, in Yemen are um, fragmented and um, there are many conflicts within the conflict. Now the Yemeni Yemeni talks have solved part of this, uh, but I don't know how long it will hold. It needs to have uh, immediate reconciliation. It needs to have immediate action uh, and response so that um, uh, it, it holds through. Uh, thank you, Muna. Uh, you gave us some current issues and underlined the position. Uh, actually, it is really important and also helpful to understand what's happening and also going on in Yemen now. And we are also kind of happy. We know it's not maybe really an achievement, but it is also really good to hear this kind of positive development and dialogue. It is really important, especially during this wartime. Uh, meanwhile, we are really inspired by your efforts and really wonder about the Food for Humanity Foundation, which you mentioned just at the beginning of our conversation. 
Uh, we are also the follower of this foundation. Could you please give a little bit information about the aims and the activities of this network and what is the story behind this and also its effects, accomplishments during the war? Because it is really important as the humanitarian aid we all know. Um, thank you. Um, Food for Humanity is one of the first uh, women-led uh, CSOs or civil society organizations in Yemen. It initiated in 2015 um, and it was founded by Yemeni women and also youth uh, peace builders working on the ground. The women and the, uh, the women led the youth um, and tried to, we were trying to make them, um, you know, mobilize them to, to refrain from fighting and to join volunteer work, humanitarian work, development work. Because the, the youth and the children were really uh, being recruited all the time for fighting. So we had two real main aims here to, um, first of all, to have emergency uh, life-saving uh, aid, clean water, education, women's protection, medical care uh, to thousands of families in Yemen who were um, affected by the com uh, violent conflict. And also um, the uh, threatening health crisis, uh, the climate change impacts in Yemen are very big. We've had a lot of flooding and we've had so many uh, impacts that nobody really was um, focusing on. Um, and uh, these are some of the projects that we have been working on to uh, really restore uh, the basic services. For instance, we were fundraising to provide um, water stations for uh, for Yemenis. Um, we were also um, fundraising to support local hospitals to provide uh, solar energy because of the electricity issue. But at the same time, we're also working to support livelihoods and economic opportunities for families who have lost their salaries, who have lost their lives, livelihoods, or they have lost uh, their main uh, breadwinner in the family. So, um, all of this um, is really not only emergency aid, but we're really trying to work um, to build the resilience uh, and the recovery of the Yemeni people uh, and maintain their dignity through, uh, instead of you know just giving them aid or giving them hand out, food handouts, we're trying to maintain their dignity by providing um, small income generating projects for them where they will be able to uh, you know, generate their own income and uh, preserve their dignity instead of just waiting for somebody to bring them flour or oil. Uh, we also work on promoting gender equality and empowering women and girls. Um, and uh, this is the advocacy that we are also working on to enhance civic values, uh, charitable and uh, responsible citizenship, uh, especially among the young people. We focus a lot on the young people. Um, and um, uh, like I said, we're trying to strengthen the community resilience because this will prevent more um, uh, violence or cycles of violence from happening. Uh, and so we try to really uh, think about how can we uh, prevent more uh, violence uh, in the community uh, by uh, supporting community togetherness through awareness, through dialogue, through security dialogue, sometimes community dialogues. Um, so uh, these are the type of projects that we're working on. We've been able to um, to help um, just with water only more than 80,000 families. Um, and um, we have been able to um, restore schools with the help of our friends uh, at Madre. Uh, this is a great organization that have been helping us. Also, I can have been helping us. And um, we were we managed with um, uh, Madre to uh, restore a school. And now we have 400 young girls in the school uh, who have been uh, studying, who are uh, continuing to study, although they are in very remote areas. Uh, but we were able to convince the families to get their schools back, in, uh, the girls back to school um, and um, reduce uh, child marriage. Uh, through our water projects and initiatives, we've been able to um, foster social co cohesion between the, fra the fragmented society because water is an entry point for the community and this is a learning that i've um, personally seen um, while i've been mediating and um, uh, sometimes you know the 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 
the conflicts on the ground, they just need somebody that they can trust uh, and mediate between them until they find uh, their own solutions. Um, and that's what we do, but we do it through water. We do it also through food, bakeries, through many other ways. So we, we take, we take um, food security to another level um, by uh, trying to link food security and water to the community ethics, the community values, uh, the community togetherness. And in this way, we, we use it as an entry point to build peace. Building peace is a different um, model for women peace builders. And you will see this not only in Yemen, uh, this is all over the world. Peace builders, uh, women peace builders all over the world use a unique way, not the old method or the old model of uh, UN peace building with all due respect, uh, which is the real old school of having the warring parties and a battlefield. Uh, we believe in uh, peace really starts from the community, from the bottom up approach. And this is how we work. Uh, this is what we do. We do it in various ways. We don't have our own school, but um, method, but we try to use we try to motivate the community to have their own methods and um, implement them in the way that they see it possible for, for peace, because this is long-lasting peace and sustainable peace. Thank you again, Muna. As you mentioned, the importance of bottom-up organizations such as Food for Humanity being understood again during the war and post-war recovery process. Increasing these examples and these experiences are guiding many peace builders in communities where war and conflict continue. So thank you again for these sharings. On the other hand, we know that you are also very active in both national and international women and peace networks, such as Women in Solidarity Network Yemen, uh, ICANN, uh, Women's Alliance for Security, Uh, as we mentioned before. Regarding this, we would like to ask the final question. How do these networks affect uh, your motivation when you work in the field as a peace activist or maybe individually? Additionally, what would you want to say about the effects of these networks on women in the long run? Well, first of all, let me say that I'm very grateful for all the networks that have supported me, starting from the Women's Solidarity Network in Yemen, ICANN, um, the uh, Kroc Institute also, uh, MADRE, all of these networks, uh, the, uh, the Mediterranean Women uh, Mediators, and all of these networks who have been able to support us, and there are many, many more, um, who have amplified our voices, who have taken our suffering, our messages and our recommendations to the highest level possible, to the UN Security Council, to the international community, to, um, um, I think these uh, networks um, are crucial to the work um, that we are doing as peace activists. These um, networks are not only helping uh, amplify our voices, but they are also a safe space for us to share our our issues, our um, uh, what we face on the ground, uh, the risks that we face. They have been able to provide a lot of support for us, both in mutual support, in uh, financial support, um, in uh, guidance, in expertise. So I think that these Um, the collaboration uh, amongst these uh, networks has really helped us as civil society uh, to build our activism even higher. Um, I think that um, many of these, for instance, like ICANN, uh, have um, international um, access uh, that has helped us a lot. Um, and this helps us to prevent and, and combat uh, violence. Um, I think that um, um, the network Uh, that I'm part of, for instance, uh, in Wassel, um, respects our diversity, but they also unite, unite us in, um, in our shared humanity, hopes and aspirations. Um, you know, the, the challenges that we are all facing are really um, in need of talent and commitment. And um, I think this is where uh, we find stories that are similar to ours, Um, and this really helps in our protection, in our feeling of, uh, in strengthening our 
uh, feeling of um, not being vulnerable but being supported. I think this is really important. Uh, women peace builders, not only in Yemen but around the world, from Iraq to Pakistan, Cameroon, uh, Libya, Syria, Uganda, Kenya, and so many other countries, and all over the world. All of these people um, are experts in um, finding pra practical solutions and building the community. When we, uh, as Yemeni peace builders, we are uh, discussing with them, we feel that there is so much to be shared, and we learn from each other, um, and they learn from us, and um, and we work together to raise awareness and to prevent um, uh, the rise also of, uh, of violence against women. Um, and so I think that. Um, and violence in the community in general. Uh, for instance, also the Women's Solidarity Network, um, which is which I am a proud co-founder of and member, um, is also promoting um, uh, the protection of, uh, of women and contributing to peace building in Yemen. The work um, that the women are doing in the Women's Solidarity Network and also with um, the help of Peace Track Initiative is really outstanding because i mean you see that these women are facilitating negotiations releasing detainees opening humanitarian corridors i mean they're working on demilitarizing schools these people and these women are taking the initiative and leading the networks are supporting them by providing resources sometimes funding um, because it's so difficult to access uh, the un pool of humanitarian funding uh, and um with these um, networks, I think that we are, um, they uh, give us more also uh, support and credibility to uh, open doors also within the international community and with um, the media, um, academia, with the government. With, so I think that these are very important um, models uh, that are really promoting uh, or preventing violence uh, in uh, unique ways, like I mentioned before. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us, Muna. It is really important for us. Actually, we know all conflicting process can be seen as difficult or even sometimes it is impossible for process to resolve themselves. However, seeing different experiences and struggles against this and national and international solidarity really inspiring. Uh, that's why it is really important for us. And maybe I would like to finish by quoting the sentences you underline in one of your interview. Uh, the world left a very violent community and this is what the women are working on. If you are really trying to think of sustainable security and peace in our community, we really need to bring women and we need to listen to them. I think it's quite kind of very good and important approach for us. And I really want to thank you again for accepting our invitation and coming here to talk with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm really honored also to be with you and um, I'm grateful for uh the opportunity to uh, to give space for Yemen also on your podcast, um, and um, um, yeah, I'm I'm very grateful and happy to um, to uh, participate with you. Thank you again, Muna. Uh, I want to underline something while closing. You mentioned some really significant current achievements regarding Yemen Yemeni conflict, but I think we should define them not only achievements. Uh, but also as success stories of you. Your experiences, insights, observations really help us to explore how we can wage peace, how we can shed light on our efforts, and also how we can benefit from the national and international networks in this process. So uh, thank you again for accepting our invitation and thank you again to be with us here. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you.